Hello and welcome back to JP Miniatures. Today I have on the desk a Von Ryan Leaper from the Tyranid range of Warhammer 40k. Uh, and we are going to be painting this up in the High Fleet Leviathan scheme. Uh, these are really nice detailed models um, and they do play rather well on the tabletop as well. Uh, especially if you're a fan of the, uh, I think it's called Vanguard Onslaught uh, rules. Uh, really good rules and these guys can seriously move up the table especially for turn one uh, if uh, if that's how you like to play so uh, without further ado let's grab some brushes So as you can see here we've got our miniature assembled and it is sprayed in Wraithbone as a really nice warm undertone uh, for the uh, paints that we're going to be applying. Uh, and the first one we're going to go in for is Leviathan Purple from the Contrast range. Now this is a, is a really nice steady base coat for all of the armoured areas of the miniature. Uh, and for this one there is quite a few to pick out on. There is the main part at the back of the uh, model here, uh, and obviously down the tail, uh, and there is a little bit of uh, armouring on the tail there itself at the very tip of the spike. Uh, and then not forgetting the uh, sort of leg uh, and lower leg uh, pads as well, as a sort of chest plate here and a head crest at the top. Uh, so just slowly work your way around the miniature, try and keep this as neat as possible, it really will help you going further down the line uh, so that you don't have too much neatening up to do later with Wraithbone as this is obviously quite a dark paint. Uh, but the reason why we get this in now is just so that when we come to apply uh, the washes later down the line for the skin, uh, we're not, we, uh, we don't risk necessarily getting this on any of the other paints that we don't want uh, and making a, a harder job uh, to tidy up. So uh, take your time, this will probably be the most time consuming aspect uh, of the miniature uh, but uh, it really will start to break up that wraith bone uh, and uh, look uh, like it's all coming together once you're finished. Once you're happy with that purple, we're going to move on to another base coat here and for this we're going to be using Flesh Terrors Red uh, and this is to pick out all of the uh, sort of clawed areas uh, and any uh, sort of fangs that are hanging around. Uh, so uh, particularly the obviously the feet of the miniature, uh, the uh, tail uh, sharp point here uh, and then particularly the claws coming down from the lower hands. Uh, and then when it comes to the top parts here, uh, these top claws. What we're going to be focusing on predominantly is just the outside of those um, and then leaving the uh, the interior uh, wraith bone for now uh, as we'll be applying a uh, sort of more sort of fleshy shade to that later on uh, rather than uh, making it all solid red. So uh, you can sort of see from the shape of the miniature where it comes down to. So for example this one here uh, sort of points down to here and then the uh, sort of fleshy part starts uh, sort of a little bit away from the tip um, but uh, just sort of use your own uh, sort of discretion they are, they do look a bit different depending on which ones you're working on um, but uh, yeah take your time to work that red all the way over uh, again it's a because it's a contrast you shouldn't need uh, any sort of multiple coats uh, so this should be not a nice sort of quick step to uh, to work with uh, and once you start getting this red on uh, again similar with the purple it really helps uh, break the model up and, uh, and really make it uh, start looking good. So once you're happy with that flesh tear is red, you're going to want to go ahead and neaten up any of these skinned areas now that you've caught with either of those colours, uh, as I have done here. Uh, and you'll want to use Wraith Bone obviously to, uh, to neaten that up just to make sure it all matches. And then the next thing we're going to move into now is a shading of the entire skinned area. Uh, and for this is going to be a mix of Magos Purple and Contrast Medium. Uh, and this is a 3 to 1 mix. Uh, and depending on how many models you're going to want to do, obviously, you know, uh, adjust the uh, formula uh, to uh, obviously give you enough paint. Uh, but what we're then basically going to do, and I'm using a, a medium shade brush for this, is just to simply apply all over uh, the rest of the miniature. Now, obviously, if this goes over the purple or the red, it really doesn't matter, um, as uh, it is obviously a lot lighter than both of those colours, uh, and you will not notice it when, once it's dried. Uh, so you can really just get this all over the miniature, 
uh, it, you know, don't want it to pull too heavily so do keep an eye on any uh, sort of ridged areas to make sure it doesn't sit too heavily in there uh, but essentially we want a nice even coat uh, all over <clears throat> but once you've got that skin shade all dry the next thing we're going to move on to is a little bit more of a recess shading uh, and for this is going to be a mix of Volupis Pink and Contrast Medium uh, and this is a one-to-one -one mix and this colour is going to go in all the uh, sort of deeper fleshed areas to the mon model um, so particularly uh, for instance if you look at the arms and legs uh, there is these sort of little vent ventricle areas uh, and we can uh, just sort of gently let that flow into that recess uh, and that will just give them a slightly more darker look and appeal uh, over the rest of the skin uh, and again looking at anything else sort of any gaps in between uh, the uh, limbs for instance so there's this sort of fleshy part here that we can add this into um, and these are most commonly seen also uh, on the fronts of the legs so we've got this big one here on the front of the knee for instance and it just helps break up that flesh as well as giving a little bit more sort of tone and definition uh, between each of the colours. Uh, so we just pick out all these areas. Now depending on the sort of stance the model has, there may be more than in some places than others. So for example, uh, my knee on the other side of this leg here uh, won't have much to it uh, and similar for the foot. Um, but uh, just sort of work your way around and pick out any of these that you want to do. Uh, it's also worth noting that we're going to be using this colour for the infill of the fleshed areas on the uh, sort of upper arms here. Uh, and for this again, just like, uh, like before, we're just going to run our brushes in between uh, the uh, sort, of, sort of grooved flesh area here, leaving the, the lighter colour that we've already applied uh, on the remaining of the, uh, of the flesh. Uh, but just sort of carefully work that way in there and then let that completely dry. Once you're happy with that Volupis pink mix, we're going to move on to another shade of Luxian purple. Uh, and again, this is going to be a one-to-one -one mix with contrast medium. Uh, and this is a little bit more of a focused uh, sort of shading for particularly on the miniature, the tentacles uh, around the uh, mouthed area here. Uh, again, just to give them a slightly different tone uh, to the rest of the model, uh, but still being fairly in keeping. So what we're going to do is just apply them to that. Now, you don't have to worry about the sort of talon arms that are coming out the front, uh, just simply the tentacled parts around. And again, because this is thinned down, this will uh, obviously keep some of the sort of uh, lightish skin shading underneath, uh, which will obviously help that blend into the rest of the miniature. And then what you could also do with the Luxian Purple if you so wish is if, depending on how you base your miniatures uh, for your army, you can also take this mix and apply it to any of the base features as well. So uh, for example we've got this uh, alien part here uh, and we're going to uh, just apply this all over uh, to uh, give that a nice shade. As one part of my basing is a uh, sort of uh, lighter sort of stone coloured dry brush which will actually really highlight this quite nicely uh, which you can obviously do as well if you wish uh, but if you do have a particular sort of basing scheme that these would be uh, usually done in then please do stick with that well, once you're happy with all those shades next thing we're going to do is start moving on to some highlighting for the first one of these highlights we're going to be looking at the skin area the lighter skin area uh, and for this we're going to be using Pallid Witch Flesh and we're going to use this rather sparingly just really to highlight uh, any of the uh, sort of hugely raised areas uh, on the miniature. So for example this tail here has a really nice curve uh, that we'd want to pick out the uh, sort of edge of. Uh, and now this will appear quite bright and, and um, will definitely stand out when you first apply it. Uh, but when the paint dries onto the model it will dry just that little bit clearer. Uh, as this obviously is a layer paint uh, and will blend into the tone of the model quite nicely. Uh, but as I say, you just really want to pick out all of the sort of raised and sort of prominent areas of the skin. Uh, anything where you want to uh, sort of accentuate the, the shading that we've already done. Uh, but uh, just sort of use this uh, as you'd want to onto the miniature. The only place I will really draw your attention to is around the uh, top of the tentacles areas we'll want to uh, sort of from the base of those just gently uh, sort of come in a little bit with the highlighting uh, just to help uh, sort of blend that in with the rest of the skin um, and, uh, and sort of break that up a little bit make them look a little bit more interesting uh, but uh, as I say 
Other than that, this is really just as much as you want to put onto the model. Uh, if you want it to look uh, a little bit more darker with the uh, sort of skin tone that we've already applied, then as I say, you are quite happy to leave it where it is. The, the rest of the highlights will really include the, especially on the purple uh, and the red, they are really going to make that pop. Um, and the, uh, let's say when the skin shade dries it gives a really sort of natural highlight anyway because obviously that's one of the bonuses of using uh, a contrast paint uh, to that level as well uh, even in a thin state so work your way around the model and uh, obviously pick out as much as you'd like to do once you're happy with that skin highlight the next thing we're going to do now is move on to highlighting up the purple uh, and for the first highlight we're going to use here is jean steeler purple um, and we're going to be using a brush and a technique uh, that will be for feathering. So for brush wise, I would recommend not necessarily the smallish tip brush that you've got, but one that you can keep uh, a really fine point on. For example, I'm using uh, the zero size from the Artist Opus range, uh, which certainly isn't the smallest brush by any means, uh, but is a really nice thin, thin and pointed tip. Uh, and for this we're, go we're going to do is we're going to thin the paint down just a little bit uh, from the layer consistency uh, and we're going to be drawing uh, sort of really concise straight lines into the back of the miniature. Now uh, for this particular colour we'll be looking uh, for the armour panelling sort of going about halfway uh, up each of the panels. Now obviously uh, some of them are slightly smaller so sort of gauge that from there and we'll be literally just drawing sort of straight lines next to each other and they don't need to be very thick lines or anything like that but you do just want to keep them uh, just as straight as possible um, and as evenly spaced as possible uh, that way uh, obviously when we come to add the next highlight afterwards uh, they will all start to match up nicely uh, so this will take quite a bit of time just obviously the neater you are the, the better it will look uh, but uh, obviously you can go for smaller and closer together if you wish uh, but really whatever sort of stance you, you choose to, to work with uh, it is best to stick with that and that way it will all blend and look the same. Once you're happy with that jean steeler purple we're going to move on to the second highlight now and this is Selenesh Grey uh, and I'm also dropping down my brush size as well so sticking with the Artist Opus range I have gone with a double zero for this as we just want that slightly smaller point now uh, for this particular highlight. Now if you're not using the Artist Opus range I would suggest just using what uh, the sort of smallest tip that you've got uh, that way it will obviously give you a, a, sm a smoother finish um, and uh, so a Citadel small layer brush for instance would would sit simply a sit of a similar size uh, so uh, we'll uh, so got that loaded up on the brush uh, and for this we're going to be using similar technique as we did before with the feathering but we are literally just going to be focusing sort of towards the uh, sort of bottoms of each of these panels uh, and keeping it nice and small nice and concise uh, on each of those areas uh, to uh, maximize the effect of the feathering. So pretty much same as before, just sort of work your way around each of the armor paneling uh, and uh, pick out those details. Now what we're also going to look to do with the Selenesh Grey is use it as a bit of an edge highlight uh, and for that we're going to be uh, sort of picking out so obviously any grooves on the tops of the paneling here I'm hoping the uh, camera is picking this up um, but you can sort of use this to uh, sort of gently run your brush along the tips of these uh, just to uh, highlight those areas as well. Once you're happy with all that purple, we're going to start highlighting up the red next. And for this, we're going to start off with Evil Sun Scarlet. And we're going to use this in a couple of different ways, depending on which parts of the model you're working on. Uh, so particularly if you're working on any of the claws, uh, the lower down claws, for instance. So this one here, we're going to be looking for the uh, sort of sharp edges um, and curves of the claws to, uh, to highlight uh, and bring attention to those details. Um, but then particularly then turning to the top arms here, a bit where the, the armour panelling is similar to that of the purple, um, we are going to uh, sort of feather uh, lightly this uh, red onto each of those lines, uh, but also then turning the model to the side uh, and picking out the, the edges as well. So we really want these uh, red claws to stand out. They are such a huge part of these models uh, and we want them to be, uh, to be on show. 
Next up we're going to be using some Wild Rider Red and we're going to be using this in much the same way as we did the Evil Sun Scarlet but instead of uh, doing such large lines or larger highlights down each claw we're going to be a little bit more selective uh, and we're going to bring that uh, sort of part way rather than all the way back uh, just sort of keeping some of that uh, Evil Sun Scarlet on show as well uh, and bringing the attention to the sort of sharpest uh, areas. Uh, so work your way around those areas again uh, and pick out those details and then we can move on to the final highlight of the red. With that red looking really sharp now the final highlight we're going to apply is some Troll Slayer Orange and this is to be used just on the very tips uh, of, the, uh, of the claws and talons of the miniature just to really pick out those sharpest points. Uh, so what we're going to do is just have a little bit on the brush, not too much, uh, and just pick out the very edges and, uh, and tips of these areas just to really bring attention to them. Um, so that, that'll almost look uh, venomous in a way of a sort of orange poison as to where it's coming out. Uh, but it is a really nice sharp highlight that just finishes them off very nicely. Once you're happy with that red, there's just literally a couple of final details to do on the miniature uh, and then it is all finished and ready to be based. And for this, the first one we're going to use is a little bit of Skeleton Horde uh, and this is to pick out the uh, teeth uh, on the miniature. Now, because of the tentacles, there aren't many teeth on here, but there is just a small sort of top jawline uh, with a few teeth sticking out. Uh, so we are just going to gently run our brush over those and just pick out those details with a little bit of Skeleton Horde, leaving a really nice sort of shade and highlight over those areas. And then finally, it wouldn't be High Fleet Leviathan without that classic glow around the eyes. And for this, we're gonna use some iodine yellow, uh, and we're just simply going to, again, similar to the teeth, run our brush over those eye areas. Um, and you don't matter if you go just a little bit below, it will just accentuate that sort of glow uh, around the eye socket itself. Um, and really make that eye and head area pop. This is such a really lovely and easy finish uh, to the face uh, and, uh, and I have done this on, on many Tyranid models and it, it, the larger the model obviously the, the greater the detail you, you can uh, pick out but uh, it really does help bring these models to life. And there we have a finished Von Ryan Leaper for High Fleet Leviathan, ready to take to the tabletop and uh, consume biomass for the fleet. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Uh, please leave a comment below if you have any questions or a like. Uh, if you're new to the channel, please subscribe and there'll be more content to come coming forwards. Uh, and uh, I will look forward to seeing you in the next one. Thank you.